Hello everybody, welcome to today's video, that's gonna be our fourth video in the series and hopefully you had a good time with other videos that was helpful to you. And today we are gonna do a couple things, and one of which, like we said in the previous video, we are going to modify the driver class. And we're gonna add some additional browser settings and ask the user to choose. Not like asking user directly, indirectly in the code, we're going to set what the browser is. Also, we are going to look at pages package. And that said, if we have time, we can look at the utils package as well. And then we're going to do another test trial, whether if the new driver class will work. Then slowly I will introduce setting up the page factory. What is this for? It is to initialize web elements we don't want them to float around if you don't initialize them you're gonna get that's also right here if not initialized properly you can see no pointer exception which is basically like saying I don't recognize where you point, where you say what you say is. For example, this web element is here, but I cannot exactly find it. So that's what null pointer is, not able to find the element. That we say this element, but this element is not initialized. Okay, let's get started. Let's open our framework. Hopefully everyone is doing good and they're adjusting well to the changes. It is important to note that when you are building your own framework, always check your main structure, how you are building it. So just like I wrote it down here, write down what you want to have and what you want to do with them. Why you do, for example, I'm setting a page factory to initialize. What do I want to use for pages package? I'm just gonna have my web elements. And there I'm gonna use Annotation find by. And later on, we can also look at find bys as well. And what is utility? That's going to be my helper methods. Like helper methods. Or let's say functions. And we can also say navigation helpers. So if you write your custom navigation, yes, you can also do anything that you do to make your job easier, make your code function better. And also, this is where I will build a base class. And I will make this abstract. And you should know what abstract type is from data types. Why we make abstract class? If you don't know, please look up Java OOP concept, object oriented, to learn more about abstract types. And just to remind you, if I make this class abstract, let me write it down. Cannot create object. From this class of let's say base class because it's abstract we cannot have object that's the nature I don't want anybody to make object of it but whenever you have implementation of this abstract class absolutely you can create object of those also I think I plan to put page factory here and then make sure pages package stands not the package but the classes let's say right here class extends base so we need to apply this rule so have a little setup like this so you can do a better job at designing your own framework all right just like we mentioned in the previous video we said to modify the driver class and let's get started so we are not using the static block now let's write our method it's going to be public and we can make it static and the type is web driver why because i want to return the driver you see the driver is private right you cannot access it you have to use getters which is sort of like my getter here uh, also you see my other getter here get driver similarly this is what's happening here and i'm just going to name this one driver like i said in the driver class we are going to pass the browser browser option and which is why we're going to say string browser. We are asking 
who is calling driver should also specify which browser they are working with, whether it's Chrome, if it's Firefox. And at the end, we are going to return the driver object. You notice the name driver and the return driver are two different things. Usually, I don't do this naming, but on this one, I will do because I want to get the driver. And the way you can differentiate, you can call this one by the class name because we have static web driver. Right? You can also do this one. That's it. This is not really needed. And now let's write our code. And we are basing if the browser equals, and let's start with Chrome, and let's set up the Chrome driver using Bonnie Garcia, a driver manager, the second option. And we're going to say Chrome driver and then set up. And then we're going to point driver to new Chrome driver. Similarly, we are going to do else if. And let me copy this part. We are just going to change the quotation. Right here, we can say. We are just going to change this Chrome to Firefox. And if this is the case, let's set up to Firefox. Same way we did for. And then we're going to say driver is new Firefox driver. And let's also get the edge driver. And I'm going to mention what you should do on this one. Let's say, I think I copied it already. Let's make this edge. And if you're using Mac, you can also optionally do Safari on this one. Next, we are just going to set up Edge Driver. And then we're going to say Driver is an Edge Driver. As you can see, as we modify our code later, we're going to implement Remote Web Driver. That's important. And you can see the other drivers here, Safari, Opera, IE, and things like that. Also, let me add a note here. There is Microsoft Web Driver to download. And then it's a simple one. If you're using Windows, you have to do this. If you have Mac, you just change this option with Safari and just change the driver here. If you don't install this Microsoft Web Driver, then Edge driver will not work. That is a problem. I already did that one, so I don't have any problem. And also, let's put one other option. Say, if browser equals headless. Headless means run the process in the background and do not show me anything. No visual test, visual run. That's pretty much what it says. And Let's get, you can use Chrome driver or Firefox driver, but I will go with Firefox driver. And you do the driver setup, and then you say driver equals new Firefox driver. And we have to pass a parameter here that's going to allow us to go and find Firefox options. Options class has implementation that says set headless. And it's asking for true or false. We're going to say true. So this Firefox instance will run in the background. That's what it does. If you make it false, then it will not run headless. It will run just like usual. Open the browser and then go through the pages and so and so. Lastly, in the else block, let's just do web driver manager or you know what? Let's not do last option. If user does not put anything, I assume the user meant headless. And then I will just call my driver method and then pass headless. Now, this method will work. And then eventually, driver is going to be configured and driver will be set to go. Let's do a quick test. 
let's go to Java and let's add a new class. Say connection test. All right, let's add our test methods in this class. And don't worry about the setup, this is just to test if we get our driver working. So notice that when we test Chrome, we don't expect any problem. Let's say Chrome test. Similarly, when we test Firefox, we don't expect any problem. But whenever we do test Edge driver, we're going to copy and paste the command. And then that will enable us. That's the Microsoft Web Driver that is needed to enable Edge running. Let's add our annotation test. We can use Jupyter. Later on, we're going to use test ng and build our setup, tear down, and so on and so forth. And then let's remember our driver class. Our method is just driver. And we're going to add the type of browser, of course, it's Chrome. Let's import it. And we can say get, and let's copy Amazon here. Let's execute. All right, that one worked. Let's copy the same method. We're just going to change the keyword from Chrome to Firefox. Let's say this is Firefox test and then change our keyword from Chrome to Firefox. Yeah, let's test this one. Of course, this test will not work if you don't have Firefox installed. Just wanted to share that. All right. So this one is also working. We are going to use this command. But when you open your PowerShell, make sure you run it as admin, otherwise it may not work. Or your command line, whatever you're opening, you need to run it as admin. Let's add our web driver. We're going to say web driver dot, that's an edge. And then this is edge driver. This is the first parameter we're passing. And then the second one is to get the path, where we put it, and the resources. So we're just going to copy path. And then place it as the second parameter. And if you're using Mac, you don't need to specify this extension. You just need to take it out, if ever you have it. You probably don't have it, but I'm just saying. And this should set our Edge driver. Let's see if we downloaded the correct version. We might not, so we're going to go and download the other one. Let's also test for headless. And in the parameter for browser, if you don't put nothing, it's going to give us headless. If you put headless, it's also going to give us the headless. So two options. Let's go with one of them. Let's say headless test. And for the parameter browser, let's get rid of everything. Let's see if we are going to see anything in the output. As you can see, it says you are running in headless mode. And that's all. We don't have any validation, so we don't see nothing. Let's get the title. As you can see, the driver was called twice, but there are two different drivers. To get around that, let's do the driver, driver, and let's say driver, I'm not getting any browser selection. And now I'm going to get rid of the code. And 
and get the parentheses as well. Let's use one object for both cases. Let's execute. All right, we got the page title. Don't worry about what it shows here, warnings and stuff like that. Let's also repeat the same test with headless option. You know, if you don't put anything for the driver method, you get headless run. Say headless test two. And in the parameter, let's say headless. And that's all. We're going to expect to get the same output. Let's test it. It's able to find out that we are running in the headless mode. No background. All right. So we got the same output. Headless is working. Optionally, you can set, for example, if you want to work with Chrome at any case, even if you don't put, just change the set list to Chrome. Regardless, you pass anything in this browser option. If you don't put nothing, then it will enable Chrome to be running. That's your choice. Let's go back to Chrome test. So let's do the same thing. Let's get this driver from here. And let's put it right here. And optionally, we can do this. Let's add the driver here. And then let me comment this out. You know that we can do that. And I'm not doing that. But here I'm going to set the Chrome. So if I'm using this driver object at line 8, they will be opened by Chrome. And let me, for example, let me close these, line 34 and line 42. Now, they're going to run with Chrome, even though we named them headless. But that's not the goal, so they can be opened or closed. It's up to you. So let's test this Chrome test with line 11. Let's see if we can get the driver from line 8. Okay, now that we notice that we can use one object for all of our tests, we can continue replacing them. But you need to decide which browser you're going to use here. And let's do a setup. Here, let's say public void setup. This is a standard procedure. If, you're running, if you are running test suite, you have to have your suite. But this is just a simple example. We can use this before each. Or we can also use before all. Before all, I want to make sure driver is ready. But do you notice that if we put it in the local block, this is not accessible. So what we're going to do, take this above at line 10. We're just going to declare it. And we are just going to get rid of this web driver here. So now that, hopefully that makes more sense, one object, and we're using it in all other methods. Also, it is a good idea to give time for driver to run and that's called implicit time and for that you call driver.manage that you're gonna look at timeouts and then do you see implicitly wait so give driver some time so it could load the page for you this depends on what you are testing what you're checking so we're gonna say time unit dot let's say seconds and then let's give 20 seconds 
Okay, obviously we need to swap these. It's gonna go right here, and this is gonna go right before the gun. Okay, first, 20 seconds. And you can change this variable. And let me show you the options again. Time unit, we'll do micro, milli, minutes, nano, and seconds. Let's go for the seconds. Based on what you select, you need to change your value right here. And let's run Chrome test once more. This will not do nothing, but it will just arrange time. Okay, do you see this problem? Setup method must be static if you are using before. Oh. Or it says you need to annotate it like this. I don't like to annotate it like that, so I'm just going to do static void. And whenever I make this static, now these guys are not happy, so I'll just go to line 12 and make the driver static as well. That should fix the problem. And let's run the Chrome test. All right. Now that's working. Let's also add one more line here in our setup. Let's say driver dot manage dot window dot you see there is full screen get position get size maximize yeah let's go with maximize and it's going to make the Chrome window full screen. Now let's run. All right. Optionally, we're going to look at other types of weights. But right now, this is good. Good to know this setup. It will help you. So this setup will be executed before everything. So driver is ready. I set it for Chrome. And if you're using this object at line 12, you're going to run with Chrome. And you have some time given to you. If websites are taking time to load, you might need to increase or decrease this number here, say. For example, if you're opening a website at Heroku, Heroku, and if the website is running on free account, then Heroku Dino, or the computer, is turning on when somebody is accessing that website. Otherwise, it's turning off. That means it requires some time to load the page. So you might need to increase this. All right, let's look at what we have here. So our tests went all right. Hopefully you got some idea what to do, what not to. And let's set up the page factory. And under the main of Java, let's create a new package and say pages. And like we have here, we're going to store web elements and find by, but this is going to extend to base class. And then let's add another one at the main of Java. Let's create a new package and let's name it Utils. And then we're going to set up the page factory, but before we do that, let's create a base class right here. And we are going to make it abstract, as we talked about it. Also, let's add a new Java class under Pages package. Let's say Home. Let's say Amazon Home. As our design, 
and switch to base and let's add our web driver here let's keep it private now that we have driver here we're gonna utilize this one so we're gonna update our driver class once more but later on we are still in the process of designing our framework so that's gonna become so much better at the end we just need a few more videos and I'll be getting them done soon so in our connection test you notice that we did this right before all so we are gonna need this actually not here actually there will be one and only one and that's gonna be here and then because this is static we need to make our web driver static that's no problem now that it's happy just like before all we also need to say when you are done you need to exit That's usually called tear down or close or it's up to you how you want to name it. And we can make this after all. And we're just going to tell driver dot quit. Now that these two methods are done, since we are working on one page, it could be also a good idea to and nav utils like navigation utils and next video we work we are going to work on this also let's look at the page factory and then we're going to say page factory and then we're going to initialize elements and we have to pass our driver also we need to say this class and that's all you can just say this and it's, it's gonna be pointing out this page but this is not good enough to initialize elements because we did this in our abstract base class we need to go to Amazon home and say it extends base Let's add our constructor here. And then let's go for super. We are just telling this constructor. Let's press control and go. And it's going to point this one right here. Now, lastly, now we made a connection so whenever we have a web element right here let's make an example you can say public web element and let's say login this is just an example and then we're going to add our find by annotation Usually login page is by ID, let's say by ID it's login. Or it could be something else. Similarly, let's make another one, let's say password and password for the ID locator. And we are gonna look at how to find the locators in our following videos. Now they don't make sense because in the Amazon we did not find the ID locator just yet. We will find it. But let's try to access these elements right now. Let's go to our connection test. And I'm going to add another test. Let's say test web elements. And 
let's look at if we are able to access Amazon Home. Let's see. Amazon Home A. You can name it A, B, C, whatever. Let's say new Amazon Home. Let's say A dot. For example, we can say A dot login. And then if it's something you can click, you can click. If it's a text box, you can clear and then do something. Usually for login, that is to enter something. If it's a checkbox, you're going to say is selected or not, or is enabled or is displayed. Some things like this. You can say login.click, for example. We'll do a click. Optionally, we can make them static and call by the class name. There's another way to go. Let's try to work on the password. Let's say password dot, as you can see, it's not able to find it. And let's make this static. And now, let's put here Amazon Home dot password, because it's static. You can see dot. And then move from there. Let's say that's the text box. Before we enter something, we clear it. And this is just an example. Not that it's going to work. But I was just showing you how to get these web elements, one way or the other. It looks like we initialize the web elements, and most likely properly. And if not, in the next video, we're going to see no pointer ex exception. And that will be all for today's video. Hopefully, you got something out of it. Feel free to ask questions below. I will add some information in the descriptions. And hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye now.